Uh, I think for the sake of time, we're going to move on to the next referendum topic. So I'm going to hand over to Sodom to start going on to that. Um, we'll start off with the same question of, um, we'll go down the line and just say what you're looking to vote on and why. Um, shall we start with Gauri's again? <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is um, a subject matter that comes close to my heart. Um, in that the way that the euthanasia debate arose and, and the initial form of um, form of the bill that we were about to debate in the start um, was a huge concern and I know remains a huge concern to those who suffer from disability or chronic illness in New Zealand and um, I have multiple sclerosis and so for me that was my community um, and that's you know a degenerative illness that doesn't have a cure so it did come under um, the euthanasia bill in a way that um, felt like it made that community uh, vulnerable to you know so that's the slogan being you know the the sort of choice to die becomes an obligation to die because as you become more and more dependent and more and more um, of what might be perceived as a burden on family on whanau on the healthcare system there may be pressures um, on on those who do suffer from chronic illness or disability to, to um, access this law. Um, and that's absolutely heartbreaking for those communities. So I, I do want to acknowledge that as the starting point. And that was one of the things that as the Green Caucus, um, we fought really hard to amend in the final form of the bill. Um, and for me, being a member of that community and being also um, someone who believes in the choice that this law will provide if it's um, if it's passed, that was important. That there are measures there where um, the intention of the law is reflected in the in the final bill. So the intention being that those who suffer from uh, terminal illness that are very close um, to to um, death can choose. Um, the way that that happens for them and, and the, the amount of suffering or the circumstances of um, of passing on. So that was really important to me, but I think the vulnerability um, that was raised in, in those early debates remains. I think our disability community is, is vulnerable. I think chronic illness is something that people suffer through with um, varying degrees of access to healthcare, but also varying degrees of access to other social support. So our um, social safety net, and we know this, is broken. We need reform so that people who are dependent on income support, for example, on home care, on housing that's accessible, can get those things. Um, and that comes into the suite of proposed policies that we have as the Green Party for the next government, because we know that you can't put on the table something like euthanasia, which is something that we want to celebrate for our communities who do want to access that choice without making sure that the choice is real, because there is actual social support around people to thrive and to live and to be part of the community for as long as they do want to be as well. So I support the law, but I also think that we need a suite of other changes and other investments in our social <laughs> safety net to make sure the real choice. The euthanasia bill, really the biggest reason is because I want that choice for myself should I find myself in a situation where I'm suffering or I'm right at the end. I've had personal experience with family quite close to me uh, dying of cancer very painfully and still suffering and suffering for weeks and weeks on end that it just doesn't seem humane. Um, so if that were to happen to me, it's a choice I'd like for myself. I concede it's difficult sometimes to pitch the law to protect those people who need protecting. I know I've got a friend who's a quadriplegic and we've discussed this quite a bit. And he said there was a time in his life where had that option been available, he would have taken it and he would have regretted it. Uh, he, he living well now and living a happy life. So there, there's a there is danger there, but still the choice needs to be there. I'd like it for myself and I think everyone should have it for themselves. Yeah, again, um, on this one, um, my, I'm, I'm going to be voting no, and that is our party, party perspective again. We're, we're encouraging people to vote no. And the reason essentially is we, we believe that the role of government and the role of law is to protect the vulnerable and uh, from what we can see overseas anywhere where euthanasia has been implemented the vulnerable aren't being protected for example in, in, in Belgium roughly roughly two percent of deaths in Belgium which, which is a third of the assisted suicides uh, apparently the person hasn't requested it 
Um, so so the, system, the system always ends up being abused. But that's, that's ones who haven't requested it, but even the ones who are requesting it, um, it's very hard to identify whether or not there's coercion. And even if there isn't coercion, just having the option there, like Cliff was saying with, with his friend, it's very, very common to meet people who, you know, you know, people go through all kinds of hard things in life. Um, and even if you are terminally ill, um, you know, often when you've got something like that, there'll be depression associated with it. At that, at that point, you probably will want to die. You'll, you'll meet lots of people who say that they would have taken the choice to die, but, but having not had the choice, they, 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 they say later um, it would have been the wrong choice, and, and, and they, they're glad they didn't have the choice. Um, so, so yeah, we, we think government's role is to, to protect the vulnerable, and, and essentially like life is sacred from, from the womb to the tomb. Um, it's, not, it's not our place to, to take innocent life, essentially. Michael? Thanks, Sonam. Um, look, um, when I voted on this issue in Parliament, it would be the most difficult vote that I've ever taken as a parliamentarian. Uh, like like a lot of people I've had, I've known people who have had difficult deaths, and that really kind of rests on your conscience when you think about these issues. And when I spoke in the debate in Parliament about this issue, um, the comment that I made was that those people who were voting yes would have to accept that there will be people, if this bill proceeds, uh, who will access end of life um, uh, services and, and and be euthanized, who are, in my view uh, don't really consciously and actively want to make that choice. And I'll touch on that a bit more later. Equally for the people who voted no, um, we have to accept that there will be people who continue to have bad deaths because I, I looked very closely into this and while palliative care is wonderful and while we need to support it much more than we do at the moment, there are a number of um, deaths that simply cannot uh, be completely alleviated through quality palliative care. So there's no perfect solution to this and I really hope that, hope that the debate that unfolds in New Zealand recognises that and examines these issues in a respectful way. In the end I came down on the side of, of voting no in Parliament and I'll vote no on the referendum as well. And fundamentally to me it's about, it is about that issue of people who are vulnerable, about people who by definition are vulnerable because they've been through an extremely difficult period in their lives, struggling with illness, struggling with the complexities of that, struggling with the feelings that they might be a burden on the, their loved ones around them. And I just deeply worry that, worry that there will be people who feel that they should make that choice even though it's not really the choice that they would want to make um, if they had complete agency in the matter and weren't so, so vulnerable. And there's a, there's a real philosophical clash here between people who just say, well, individual rights rule and that's all that matters, and between a worldview which is actually, when we live in a society, it's about more than just exactly what I think I might want at some stage for myself. You actually have to think about the broader community. And in the end, on the balance, that's where I, I line up on this, that the risks of the vulnerable are just too great and I'll be voting no. As with cannabis, it's not a party political position. It's up to each of us to decide and I encourage people to look closely in it, into it before they make their decisions. Um, thank you. Um, so I voted um, against this bill in all stages and I will be voting against um, this in this referendum as well. Uh, my reasons, uh, let me uh, you know, tell you a little story. When I was growing up, in those days when we used to fall sick and we were taken to our doctor, the quickest way to um, help us used to be uh, giving us an injection. So those days injections used to be really popular and now I know that injections are not that popular. We have some flavored you know, syrups for children and tablets obviously for grown-ups. So when I was young, you know, I used to think that when I used to see somebody falling sick and somebody, you know, dying, I used to think, why, you know, doctors can't give them an injection just like they give us an injection and we are fine. Why people have to suffer like this? Why can't they be cured by just an injection? But as I, you know, I went through my primary school and to my secondary school, I realized that doctors cannot give that injection to cure those people because there is no medicine, there is no cure um, for, for that kind of illness. And so when I was young, uh, you know, going through that phase when I used to feel really frustrated that doctors not able to cure everybody, I, I used to say that I want to become a doctor and I'll grow up and I'll be giving injections to all the sick people in the world to cure them. So as I realized that those injections are not there and that's why doctors cannot give those injections, I decided that I'll become a scientist because at that point I realized that it's the scientists, they develop these cures and then the doctors, they administer those cures. 
So that is the reason I became a scientist. And I'm really proud to see that I have publications in international journals and you know, a protein has been defined after my publication. Uh, it's um, in Wikipedia. So um, I, as a scientist, I cannot support this legislation because I truly believe in science. And it's because of science, you see the every age of humans, you know, over time, we, it's, it used to be in 50s, now in New Zealand, it is 82, 83 years. And we are able to live up to this age because of, uh, you know, the science, because of the antibiotics, because of the medical care that is available. And I'm very optimistic. We need to invest more in science, more in research and development to support health, more in supporting people that are going through that very difficult phase because of that illness. Of course, palliative care is very important, and I'm not going to say that that is not enough. We can do more in palliative care, and that is where we need to focus, and as well as focus on other ways of providing the dignity that people are looking for. And you know, when this bill was before Parliament, there was a lot of lobbying going on from both sides because you know both sides wanted to see that their side actually is the majority. And the first thing that I said to people those who spoke to me was that, look, this decision of mine, because I know that it's for some people, it is faith-based. I said to them, look, my decision to vote against this bill is not faith-based. So I'm very open to be convinced my decision to vote against is science-based. Evidence is seen in the last 40 years, how we have helped human life. And I believe we will continue to that's the reason I am going to vote for Indonesia and I have voted um, against this bill in all stages in Parliament. Thank you. Talking about this referendum, um, do this is an open question for anybody. Um, do you think the current re legislation deals with people who are not um, making conscious decisions but are rather being coerced or influenced into making their choice? Look, I, I can, I'll give my view on that. Oh. Because um, yep. I spoke to this, in, in my view, the legislation does make a genuine attempt to do that. Uh, so the legislation went through a substantial select committee process. It does have quite a lot of controls. It requires multiple points at which consent is given. It requires multiple medical professionals to be involved. So I, I do think there's been a genuine attempt to do that. My concern is just that no system is is perfect, and um, you know I've been there with people at the very end of their lives when they they feel like they're a burden and, and I, I just worry that in a, in a very selfless way there will be some people at that point of their lives who make the decision not on the basis of what they really want but on the basis of what others might want. One of the other unfortunate things that I see in my role as a member of parliament is the scale of elder abuse in our community and in the ways in which vulnerable elderly people who, some who you know, more often than not will have some of the chronic conditions and life-threatening conditions that qualify um, are manipulated and abused by some of the people they should be able to trust the most. So in my view, even with a bill that's well constructed, there will be some cases that slip through. And in the end, with this bill, it's not like the consequence of a, of a, of a regulatory failure is that someone has to pay a bit more tax or something's a bit inconvenient. The consequence is that someone potentially loses their life who shouldn't. And again, that's why for me, it's a very high threshold before I could agree to this. And I just knowing human nature, and um, having some of those concerns, I can't quite get there in terms of supporting it. Um, does anyone have a response to that? I saw one from Alistair. Michael was uh, just okay. saying that essentially that it was a well, reasonably well constructed bill with, with quite good safeguards or attempts at safeguards. But um, on, on, on the face of it, looking at a lot of the uh, amendments to the bill that um, the MPs voted against, um, it doesn't seem like that is the case. And um, I mean, some some of the organisations that have that have brought in people from over, overseas and and c comparing with um, legislation overseas, it, it doesn't seem it, it seems like well, we'd say it's a bad idea, but we'd also say it doesn't seem like a good imp good implementation. They, they could have, they could have built in a lot more safeguards than than they have. My friend who's against the bill told me this is a quadriplegic friend of mine, he said that the cool down period isn't long enough. So in that respect, he feels that the legislation could be improved or, well, he's against it anyways. But one of the problems with the legislation, he feels that the cool down period isn't enough. But I'm for the bill. I'd like to ask Michael why he thinks he has the right to decide for other people how and when they die. Well, all of us here are, are running for parliament, and um, that means that all of us are putting forward ultimately ourselves to make decisions that will affect the lives 
of all of our fellow New Zealanders. That's that's the job that we're running for. Um, and what we face in terms of this issue um, is a significant legislative and ethical debate. And as I said before, um, there's a question of, of how you conceive of rights in our society. And you can conceive of rights as purely being an individual matter that you should always, absolutely to the exclusion of anything else, maximise the rights of each of us as an individual. And I think to a large degree that's quite a good thing. Um, but my own faith and political and, and worldview tells me that actually you have to balance that against the rights of the, of the society and the community that you live within. And as I've explained in the course of this debate, my concern is that the rights of some who are vulnerable might in fact be compromised if you put, put a piece of legislation through um, that, that puts in place end of life processes uh, that those people might not actually have the agency to be able to, uh, to make their own decision. I worry a little bit if, I'm, if I can expand on that, that this is potentially quite a good bill for um, confident um, middle class people who know how to navigate their way through complex regulatory and, and, and uh, health systems. But I really worry about the vulnerable people, the people who are older, the people who aren't so confident in speaking up for themselves, um, uh, people with other, other vulnerabilities that they won't be able to make a genuine choice in all cases. I, I acknowledge it's a difficult debate, but uh, I, I land on that side of it.